we're all being lied to. Propaganda and censorship is as alive today as it's ever been. There's an especially insidious form of censorship that's happening that I'm gonna cover at the end of this post. But let's go through some of the ways that these big tech companies, the media, politicians, and the elite are using to perpetuate narratives and ignore and suppress conflicting ideas. So here's a few of the ways of this happening. Outright banning or removal of content. So YouTube's a professional at this. YouTube will pick up certain keywords and just straight up ban your video. That's happening a lot. Google also suppresses search engine results. Happening a lot. Instagram's hiding content or getting to the next one called shadow banning, where it's this idea that you don't get your posts shown. They don't really show up in other people's feeds, yet Instagram or whoever doesn't tell you that it's happening at the same time. It's one thing if they ban a post and you know it's gone, but what they're doing with shadow banning is where it doesn't show up anywhere and you don't see that uh, and they don't tell you. And so you just think your content's out there and it's not. That's another form of censorship. I mean, think about that. What's a more sneaky way to do it? Tell people they're being censored, like remove their stuff or let them think it's not being censored and then let them in vain keep putting out content that nobody's seeing. This next one is a favorite of the media. So discrediting. You hear this a lot. Conspiracy theory. Buying and owning gold, the original money, is considered by some to be conspiracy theory. Owning gold or something like cryptocurrency because you don't believe that printing money and having a fake fiat currency is a smart thing and going to last, but you're labeled conspiracy theorists if you pursue on any of those or recommend any of those. And that's a light topic. You get into vaccines, you get into now with the virus stuff, you get into just anything that questions the narrative. If you question the narrative, you're suppressed or labeled conspiracy theorist or a sensationalizer or some other simple word that just basically writes you off that is used so that the powers that be and the narrative as a whole stays intact because that is all they care about. The media, politicians, the elite, they don't care about having objective truth. They don't care about facts. They care about what people will think and how they can use that to their own ends. This stuff's been going on for a long time. It's just gotten to a point with technology where it happens like that. So if we're gonna have a revolution, it's gonna happen fast. It might've taken years for revolution to build up and for political polarization to happen. Now it happens in lightning fast speed. You get on that side or you get on that side. Nobody's left in the middle. Having an opinion is not allowed. You have to either agree with them or you have to agree with them. You're not even allowed to question what they're saying because if you question something, you're labeled a racist, a bigot, sexist, this, that, whatever. Just questioning what they're saying, asking for data, back it up, show me. That is now being labeled these easy words that they use to discredit people and silence them. This is a form of censorship. The SJWs love to do this, and this is another form. They go online and they call people names and then they threaten their livelihoods. They don't have to have any pr proof. There's no burden of proof on them. They're just allowed to say, you're racist. Then other people pick up and say racist. And then the mob mentality forms online, racist, 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 racist. And then you get fired or whatever. This is happening all the time. And a very, very telling, scary example of this, there was this guy, I forget, I, I got to find his name, but you could probably Google it. He shared a research paper that was actually written by a black, I believe, professor. And it was about how protesters and riots end up reducing black voter turnout. And there's data that backs us up around the MLK times and whatnot. He shared this paper and he said, this is interesting. Read the paper. He's got really good points in here, really good data. The sharer of this paper, the dude that shared it, was called a racist, a big, et cetera, and was fired from his job. He was fired for sharing a link to a research paper and saying, this is a good research paper. You should read it. He was fired for that. He was labeled a racist for that. This is how our country will become 1984. This is how we will eventually have things like thought police, where if we even think a thought counter to the state or counter to the narrative, we'll be arrested. It's already happening. I've shifted my content from mostly away from health and other ideas like that to focus on these things because they are so dangerous. I've gotten to a point where I just can't ignore it. I cannot not say something. And I have a small following and I will have a small effect. And I'm sure at some point you'll, you'll see Twitter mobs trying to come after me or whatever. I've already had people that have said things like that because I question the dogma. I challenge it. I don't say it's right. I don't say it's wrong. I don't say, yeah, go you. I say, prove it. And just doing that now calls out the trolls to come attack you. It's what you see if you were to question any tyrant in history, just to question somebody like Saddam Hussein or Hitler or anything, to question these people would be a death sentence. In fact, there's a very telling example of where we could go with this. I'm paraphrasing all this. You'll have to Google this yourself or actually don't Google it. Use DuckDuckGo to figure it out. They were at some banquet for, for Stalin. There was a bunch of generals and political people that were there at this banquet. After Stalin gave a speech, 
they all stood up and they did a standing ovation. Well, they all were clapping and they started thinking, realizing like, well, who's going to sit down first? Who's going to stop applauding? So this went on for minutes where nobody was willing to sit down, like literally five minutes or so. I don't know how long it was, but it was something substantial where they're just literally clapping like this, like everyone's afraid to sit down. Like they don't want to offend Stalin, basically. One guy sits down and then everyone proceeds to sit down. The one guy that sat down got sent to the gulag, which basically was death internment camp, whatever. I kid you not. This is the world that you get to if you keep going along this line of censorship and not challenging ideas and not having freedom of speech. You get absolute power. You get totalitarianism. You get all the bad things that can happen from that, as we've seen in history. And what is history? It's a series of tyrants and absolute power and then revolution. And for people to think that it can't happen to us in America today, that's just sticking your head in the sand. Some other examples of censorship going on. So we talked about SJWs, shaming people if you question anything, if you do anything that's counter to their narrative, if you even share a study that might disrupt what they want you to believe or what they're trying to say, they will come after you. Banning movies, that's the newest one. So Gone with the Wind was recently banned on HBO and a bunch of other platforms. A lot of them you can't even find it right now. To make this even more absurd and hypocritical, this movie features the first black woman to ever win an Oscar. Uh, hello? Anybody up there? Anybody up there? Brain, common sense, decency. Just gone. Poof, gone. And of course, censorship's not a new thing. Socrates was forced to drink poison in 399 BC for crimes of corrupting the youth, which basically means he asked too many questions that challenged the status quo of the time. He encouraged people to, to think for themselves and ask questions. This is the world we will get if we don't uphold freedom of speech. This last one, the insidious dangerous one, is a call to arms for all of us. We have to stand up. We have to stand up for what we believe in. And of course, Twitter deletes information all the time. Twitter needs to die. It's a complete and utter disaster for humanity. It, it's part of the reason we have the polarization we have and why people cancel people and why, pe why, why companies cower to the mob. It, it's literally Twitter. Twitter is like responsible for so much of this garbage in our society today. I hope it dies. Facebook censors, but it does seem like they're taking a stand to not fact check certain things, which is good. I think the market needs to decide. People need to decide for themselves. We don't need corporate overlords to tell us what we should see or not see. That's complete and utter nonsense. Google, of course, has been manipulating search engines for a long time now. I used to be a fan of Google. I'm not anymore. Use DuckDuckGo, a private search engine, and then use ProtonMail for free private email. So this last one, this is this one's it's really dangerous. So the most insidious form of censorship going on right now it's more dangerous than everything above combined, I think. It's the shaming and attacking of individuals that challenge the narrative. You get fired because you share a link to research. This is dangerous because this is going to make the average American not go online, not challenge bad ideas, not share what they believe is truth. And it's going to create a further political divide. It's going to create these crazy people that go online that are just, they're just trying to grab power. That's all they're doing. They're trying to grab power over other people. They have no concern for people and they might lose their job and the families that are affected because of their nonsense. They feel they have the moral high ground and they're better. These people are trolls. They're pathetic. They're losers. They have nothing better to do than to try to feel good about ruining someone else's life. It's just power grab 101. And unfortunately, our species falls victim to this. So what we need is more people like you watching this, that if I reach you with this message to stand up against these bullies, they are bullies. We talk about bullying being bad in school. What about the bullying in the political landscape and online? Adult bullies are everywhere. Challenge bad ideas. Ask questions. Make people explain their statements. Say, can you show me the data, the research that supports this? And just, you know, be cordial. You don't have to get into to, to online fights. You shouldn't because it's not productive. Challenge bad ideas. Stand up for what you believe. Share information that you think is right or true. Do this in person. Do it online. The more we can make it cool to fight back these trolls, to show people online that they're not going to get away with this type of nonsense, the more we can do that. We can move the tides. Right now, though, they're winning. People can go on Twitter, form a mob, and then corporations cower, politicians cower, celebrities cower. Like this one football player that apologized for something he said. Pathetic. Pathetic. Stand up for something. Fight back. If we don't. We will live George Orwell's 1984. It will become a police state. We will have thought crimes. I'm not political. I never have been. I don't even understand a lot about politics. Like you could tell me the left, the right. I can't really define those for you. I'm starting to develop an idea of them, but I don't really get a lot of it. I purposefully decided not to. I just, it never interested me. I feel like there's nothing I can do to make a difference. And it ends up being just like 
entertainment for a lot of people. For a lot of people, it is. It's just entertainment for a lot of people. So with the, with this though, this stuff is really important because I have a two-year-old son. I have another on the way. We'd like to stay in the United States. Though the way things are right now, I'm not seeing that that could be our future. I'm seeing that we're gonna have to get this country. And that makes me very sad for a lot of reasons. But one of which is that so many people are gonna be left behind here that don't have that opportunity to do that. And they're gonna be like every other victimized population in history that had to stick their head down and just hope it would blow over. And if it did, if things did get better, those are the people that suffered though. Because a lot of times it didn't get better until after their lifetime. I don't want that to happen. So I'm out sharing these ideas and I'm encouraging you to do the same. We need to stand up for what's right. We need to focus and a return to common sense, to decency, to empathy, to compassion. We need to stop polarizing members of our own species. We need to stop attacking them. We need to fight back the Twitter mob, the SJWs, all these losers. We need to fight them back. And we need to work towards actual change because all of the inflammatory nonsense online is not, it's not changing anything. It's actually making it worse. And that's been my, that's been my thought and my, and what I believe through all this. And don't get me started on the virus nonsense. I'll just talk about that another day, I guess. Be aware that you're being manipulated. If you watch mainstream media, it's not fact. If you buy into the popular narrative, it's not fact. In, in a lot of cases, the stuff is actually backwards. It's crazy how, how that works that way. Usually when everybody believes something, it's ass backwards. You can see that with nutrition. Everybody said fat was bad for years. Doctors still parrot that, even though we know for sure that it's not. It's actually sugar and, and things like refined grains and processed foods that are the bad things. Don't be censored. Don't be silenced. Don't be shamed into compliance. Don't be censored. Don't be silenced. Don't be sh That's a good one. That could be like a, that could be a chant for good. You can get more of my work over calling a coach. I plan to be putting out a lot more of this pretty much on a daily basis. We also have the podcast, the YouTube channel, all those different places that you can find wherever there's a link or pro profile or whatever. You can find it. You know how to use the internet. I'm not going to pander to you by saying, go here. If you want to follow along, if you want to subscribe, hop on my AM5 newsletter. And every week on Friday, I put out all the content that I did for the week. And then from there, you can just pick and choose whatever strikes you fancy. I appreciate the support and do something. Take action. Don't sit on the sidelines and let these morons take over the world as we know it, because they will.